Hey guys, I'm gonna do a video about my buggy and my buddy. Anyway, this is my bush buggy. <clears throat> it's a 2003 Suzuki Vitara. And uh, I've done a couple of things to it. Really cheap. I didn't spend hardly any money on it at all. And uh, when I got it, it was... Uh, water damaged vehicle it's from uh, from scrapyard and uh, it had the guy somebody tried to launch a boat at the boat launch and uh, I think they blew a brake line and the whole vehicle went like under so um, I took the, the, the rear bumper cover off there I had it off, put it back on. I thought it looked better with it on because uh, it doesn't hang any lower than the trailer hitch anyway. But ever since I took it off uh, and I took the brackets off on the corners here, there's a bracket that goes on each corner. Ever since I took those off, uh, the bumper, um, I haven't fastened it back on properly. So I might put it back on properly, but anyway. Um, when I got it from the scrapyard, the tailgate was missing because they had sold. The tail light was sold and missing. The gas tank door was gone. So I got these from another uh, from another place, from another wreckers. That's why they're a different color. Same as the soft top, I got it from a different place also. <clears throat> uh, I just leave these side windows. Uh, I just leave them out most of the time. They have a zipper here, so you can uh, you can zipper the window back in. I just keep the windows in the back. They're in here somewhere. Anyway, so uh, I lifted it up. Uh, I didn't buy a lift kit, and I didn't use spacers. And I put these big tires on it, and they were uh, they were rubbing. They were rubbing in certain spots. So. Uh, they're 265, 75, 16, E-rated, mud and snow, sea load range, E. That's a 10-ply tire. A 10-ply tire that can take 80 PSI. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, so what I did with the suspension, I lifted it up about, I figure, about 2.5 inches or about 2 inches just with uh, longer shocks and longer springs. And I didn't buy them. I went uh, looking around the junkyard and I found, uh, I was talking to a few people uh, from online on the internet and reading forums from people from uh, New Zealand, I think it was, and the one guy had found that the rear springs from a Ford Focus wagon, um, he said that they were they would fit good and they were bigger. So I used rear springs from a Ford Focus wagon, and I hadn't heard of that anywhere else. And when I took the springs out, I've heard of people putting Jeep springs in, and I tried the Jeep springs, and they weren't quite right. They were bigger, but they weren't quite the same diameter. <clears throat> so I, w I went and got the Ford, uh, believe it or not, they're from a Ford, uh, Ford Focus wagon. The rear coil springs from a Ford Focus wagon, and believe it or not, they were perfect the diameter. They're progressive coil, and uh, they work good. So I put those in the back, and uh, in the shocks, I put Ford Fox Body Mustang shocks. So Ford Mustang from like the 80s and early 90s. Put those shocks on from the from the wrecking yard. <coughs> I don't know if we can see anything here. So those uh, springs are progressive. So the co there's wide coils at the bottom and tight coils at the top. And those shocks are two inches, about two inches longer than the factory shocks. <clears throat> so basically in the back I've got Ford springs and Ford coils. But the coils are from a Focus wagon. And the, the shocks are from a Ford Mustang. And let me tell you, she rides really good. I think it rides better than factory. And uh, I'm not using any spacers, so it's it's all usable lift. It's all... Um, I'm actually gaining uh, my stroke, my suspension. I'm, I'm actually gaining about one inch 
plus two inches of lift <clears throat> between the frame or the axle and the and the frame gained about two inches there plus I put bigger tires on so uh, it sits up pretty high <clears throat> the back bumper here is uh, taller than my knee and uh, on the front I took the springs from a four-door Vitara or a, a Grand Vitara or a four-door tracker Chevy tracker is the same so I took the front springs from a four-door this is a two-door model and I took the front springs from a four-door model and I put there's a rubber isolator on the bottom or top I can't remember but there's only one isolator so I took uh, the isolator from this vehicle and the donor vehicle so I used two isolators one on the top of the spring and one on the bottom of the spring and I used a bigger spring from a four-door model <clears throat> and that uh, that took care of the longer spring and that gave me about two inches of lift in the front I figure and then uh, for the shock there's a McPherson style strut on the front and I got those from from the back of a Grand Prix like a 95 96 Pontiac Grand Prix and they worked the shocks worked out really good <clears throat> there's a uh, I did have to move the brake line and I think I just used zip ties to hold the brake line in place the flex line there but anyway, that's the those struts are from the rear of a Grand Prix, from the back of a Grand Prix. Those shocks. And uh, another thing I did is those two bolts that that clamp. There's one on the top, one on the bottom that clamp that uh, strut to the to the knuckle there, to the spindle. And the top bolt, I slotted it out a bit this way. So your camber is adjustable because when you when you give it uh, that much lift, it throws the camber out a bit. So the the tire, the way the tire sits. So I made the camber adjustable. There's a this, another strut from the Grand Prix, and the spring is from a four door. Look at there's some grass in there. <laughs> You can tell that I do off-roading or whatever. I'm just I built this rig just specifically for off-road. <clears throat> so yeah, um, if you have one of these and if you want to lift it up, this is strictly for off-road use. So I don't know if that would uh, if this is any good for on-road or not. But the front springs are from a four-door Vitara a Tracker. Uh, double isolators on the springs so there's a rubber on the bottom and a rubber on the top um, the struts are from the rear end of a 95 Grand Prix uh, not 96 or not 97 I think they're different I think it has to be like 94 95 the old Grand Prix so yeah the front struts here are from the back end of an old Pontiac but they worked really good for me. I've take I've had this rig uh I've had this rig off-roading for hours. And uh it works pretty good. The suspension rides pretty good. Uh I don't know what to say. The tires fit good. I can get almost full lock on the steering. I modified the front bumper because Normally the front bumper hangs down uh, hangs down lower here, so I just took a sawzall and followed the line and I just cut it there So I still have my signal light and I just cut it on this line like see how there's ribs here I just followed one of those ribs and I just cut it because it was hanging down low and uh, My approach angle like when I'm driving up to rocks and trees and off-roading that uh, that's obstructs my approach angle in case there's any rocks or anything here, so I just cut that off. The rebar or the bumper, the impact bar is right there. So um, that worked out pretty good for the bumper cover because it looks still looks good. When you take the bumper cover off, you, it doesn't quite look right, and then you lose those signal lights. So I left it on. I just modified it. Another modification was I cut a hole in the middle of it, 
and I put this ATV bumper unit on here. It's uh, It's been sitting around for a long time and I don't even know what it's made to fit but it fit. I made it to fit on this buggy here and it worked pretty good. I think there's three bolts at the top so I welded some bolts into the to the to the uh, bumper support there's a metal bumper support so I welded some studs in there put the uh, put the put the bracket on there and then uh, just put nuts on and there's also uh, there's also a bolt a big bolt in behind here in dead center and that's what holds it to the to the to the bumper support and I've used this winch only once or twice because I've I never really get stuck with this thing <laughs> it's pretty capable off-road so I've only used it once and uh, it kind of let me down because it's only a 2,000 pound uh, it's only a 2,000 pound ATV winch so I went and bought a 3,000 pound UTV winch today so um, I'm going to do another separate video on that because I'm going to do a couple more upgrades to it. I'm going to put the bigger winch on. It has bigger line, bigger uh, capacity, bigger line. And this here, that, and that, they both came with the new winch. This is the old one here. And it, you can see how small the line is. It's really small. So the new winch came with bigger line and a 3,000 pound capacity. And I might have to do some modifications to to make some things work. But anyway, I'm going to do a separate video on that. The other thing I'm going to do to it is uh, I'm going to put manual locking hubs on here. So I can freewheel the hubs and the axles aren't turning when I have it in two wheel drive. That's probably not really necessary for... Uh, for an off-road vehicle that I only use on like the weekends or whatever maybe maybe once a month I don't use it that that often but it's a fun vehicle to go off-road and trailblazing on so I'm probably gonna see if I can get some locking hubs because I've been told that some of the older ones will bolt right on this is just like a steel plate that locks the axle to the hub so it, it's always uh, engaged it's always driving the axle but when you're in two-wheel drive, the, the front axle doesn't—it doesn't need to turn. It's unnecessary. And sometimes, if I'm riding like uh, the main trails, they're not very—they're uh, not very extreme or whatever. Just trail riding, I can leave it in two-wheel drive and disengage my axles. Well, that's the plan anyway. So. So anyway, yeah, those are the parts I used. These, that's just a cheap ATV bumper and winch, but um, I'm taking the winch off and I'm going to upgrade it. I had a 4,000 pound winch, but I sold it. So the 3,000 pounder that I got today is right here. 3,000 pound UTV, ATV. There's a picture of my buggy right there. Sorry that it's upside down, but you can see it's got bigger cable it's not a lot bigger but it's definitely bigger and uh, it comes with a controller and some sort of a relay or fuse and there's also I think there's relays in this box here which is easy to wire it up just two wires to the battery and two wires to the motor it's pretty simple and then there's a controller that just